Good morning. Um, let's go over 5.3 linear equations. You have a very short quiz on Canvas that's going to go with the, I think, the very first page only, really just the basic of um, linear functions. Um, got a couple of examples, just a good review of Algebra 1 and what you may have seen in MTT class. Last one is a little bit challenging, but we can do all that together. All right, let's look at the first page where we are just talking about the key terms. The first linear function, if you look closely, it tells you what it looks like already, a line function. So if you graph a linear function, it's going to be a straight line. If it's not a straight line, one or, you know, maybe you plotted a point or two wrong. So make sure you... Um, when you are graphing these linear functions in this unit, they all should be a straight line function. So the function has a straight line graph. The function can be described by an equation of the form y equals mx plus b. Now we looked at um, m, the slope, or the constant rate of change in 5.2. But every linear function have a, um, has a constant rate of change. So what does that mean? Um, let me make up a quick example over here. Say x and y. Let's look at some input and output values. Say that I'm starting at like 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now, I'm going to make up some y values. You think about what that constant rate of change is, okay? Let's say that I'm just starting at 3. The next number, I'm going to make it to be 6. Next number is 9. And as you can tell, um, the next number will be what? 12, right? Now, um, if you notice, my y values are going up by 3, right? I, I just made up a function that's going up by 3, every time now that's I mean, the, the constant rate of change is three here and this three is going to be the slope of our linear function of, of our of this linear equation um so if i make up another example let me try to make up another one that doesn't have a well yeah another one with the constant rate of change x and y say that i start at zero uh, one two three this time, let's take a look. How about I start at um, 45, next number is 40, next number is 35, and the next number is 30. Now, what's going on this time? As you can see, the numbers are going down by 5, right? Every time I go up in an x value, I'm going down by 5 on the y value. So this also has that constant rate of change of negative 5. It's going down by 5 every time. The slope of this equation will be negative 5. So that's what they mean by the constant rate of change. Um, that change is going to be exactly the same every time um, you're going up in the next value, okay? All right, um, let's talk about that rate of change a little more. Um, so the smaller the rate of change, I'm using the language that your my math lab will use, the shallower the graph. So um, a small slope will be something like this. I'm going to make up, say that I started 0, 0. Just, and for the slope, it doesn't have to start at a certain point because slope is about how many are you going up or down to get to the next point on the right. So say that for this one, I'm just gonna go up one, up one over four to the right. So if I graph a line, the slope of this line is one over four. Um, compare this to something else that I will create, maybe over here. Um, what if you have um, a point that's starting at zero, zero, both starting at zero, zero. But let's make this one go up three over one to the right. Um, if you graph that, um, this one has a slope of three. Notice how the graph that I just um, graphed on the left, the slope that I graphed on the left uh, with the smaller slope, and the graph is shallower. 
and um, this one had a greater slope of three. And I'm just comparing the one fourth and the three greater slope. Um, the graph will be steeper. So if the slope is really big, let's say 99 or 100, what that means is you have to go up 99 in order for you to go over one to the right side. So the second word, um, the greater the rate of change, the steeper the graph. Now we, I think uh, we compared the slope of two different ski slopes um, um, in 5.2. We just had to find the slope and then compare those two numbers and decide which one was steeper. So let's talk about the slope intercept form now. The slope intercept form you do know is y equals m x plus b. And um, you do know that m stands for the slope. And we use the slope formula. Just a review of what we did on Tuesday, on Monday. Uh, the slope formula is when you subtract the y's. Um, and put that as a numerator and subtract the x values and call that the, the denominator. So um, that's how you can find the slope of a line. And one more thing about y-intercept though. Um, y-intercept is the point that you will pull out on the y-axis. B stands for y-intercept. You will pull out whatever this number B will be on the y-axis. But to be on the y-axis, think about this for me. To be on the y-axis, um, which is that vertical axis on the coordinate system, say that you have a y-intercept at 3. What's the order pair for this point that I plotted on the y-axis? The order pair will be 3, I'm sorry, 0, 3, right? Another y-intercept could be somewhere like this. That one will have an order pair, a coordinate of 0, 1. Now, if you look at all these points, maybe another one down here, that one will have an order pair of 0, negative 2. What do these values have in common? Their x values are always 0, right? Why? Because in order for you to have a point on the y axis, <laughs> in order for you to have a point on the y axis, then the x coordinate has to be zero. Because if it's anything other than zero, you will plot something to the right of it or to the left of it. So uh, remember, I um, think I got, I'm going to highlight this for you because I think I asked you this on the quiz. Uh, y intercept is when it, it occurs when x value is zero. Because when x value is zero, you get to plot a point on the x, a y axis. So uh, let me read this and then we'll go through some, of, some more examples. The coefficient of x, the coefficient of x, they're talking about the slope here, or the number in front of x, um, of the line or the constant rate of total change between the input and output variables. And we only looked at slope mostly in 5.2, so you know that one. But y-intercept, we're going to add that to what we know already, and we're going to try to start, um, we're going to try to graph some lines in this lesson. Constant at the end of the equation is y-intercept or y-value. So if I make up one, y equals 5x minus 7. I just made up a random one. Um, one of the quiz questions, I'll just simply ask you, what is a slope here? Slope is the coefficient of x, 5, Slope is 5. Now, what is a y-intercept? y-intercept is the number being added. Um, it's getting really subtracted, 7, right? So y-intercept is negative 7. So what you will do is you will plot negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on the y-axis and use the slope of 5. Slope of 5 means you go up 5 and over 1 to the right. And then, you know, as soon as you have two points on a line, then you're ready to draw a straight line, right? So uh, we'll, we'll look at all these ideas today together on this 5.3 notes. Uh, but let's look at a couple more. Oh, I, well, this one looks like a word problem. Let's, let's read this one together and try this. The following situation involves a rate of change that is constant. Oh, look at that. They said rate of change that is constant. That is a linear function we're looking at then. Write a statement that describes how one variable changes with respect to the other. Give the rate of change numerically with units um, and use the rate of change rule to answer any questions. Okay, let's look. You run along. 
Sorry, I just I put the email to bed. You run along a path at a constant speed of 2.2 miles per hour. How far do you travel in 1.8 hours in 3.9 hours? Um, let me go ahead and write a statement that describes how one variable changes with respect to the other right here, okay? So let's say for every hour, for every hour, and they say you, so I'll say I run, I travel how many miles? 2.2 miles. So if I have one hour to run, I'll cover 2.2 miles. If I have two hours to run, then I will have two times 2.2 miles. So I'll be able to run 4.4 miles. So the rate of change is 2.2 miles per hour and that's going to be the unit that's going to be the unit of of our rate of change so let's answer some of the questions here um they are asking first how, how far do you travel in 1.8 hours well let's answer that in 1.8 hours i can travel 2.2 times how much time do i have one point, you know what, let's try to be careful and write more units. 2.2 miles per hour, right? We're multiplying that by 1.8 hours, right? And we really don't have to play with this unit so much, but notice the hours cancel out, right? And if you simply multiply um, 2.2 and 1.8, you will get about 3.96. And what's the only unit that we still have? miles so it makes sense the rate on uh, the rate of change slope had um two unit miles per hour and if you multiply 1.8 hours to it the answer uh unit is only in miles so we answer the first question let's look at the second one how about in 3.9 hours in 3.9 hours i can travel or i can run let me just multiply this time. 2.2 times what? 3.9, which will give us 8.58 miles. So we were using the, the, the constant rate of change to answer um, any questions here. Um, and you see how we just multiplied, right? Uh, the slope is getting multiplied by our input, our x value. Um, and then, well, it didn't say anything about the, the y-intercept here, but that one was just completely using the rate of change, only the slope. Let's look at a couple other ones. Now, they said find the y-intercept and graph the equation. Now, we'll be doing this for the next couple problems, look like. We're going to use... Uh, just slope and y-intercept form. I'm going to graph it by hand, and I will use a graphing calculator to verify our answer together. And I got a couple examples. Um, maybe we don't have to do all of them. Yeah, because they're the same type. Let me just do the um, number... Th I'll do number two and number four, okay? Um, you can try number three and five, but they're very similar. We're just graphing in the equation that's in slope-intercept form. Find the y-intercept and graph the equation y equals... 2x plus 1. What do we know? We know that the slope is what number? Slope is 2. And we know that the y-intercept is positive 1. So let's graph this by hand first. Um, if you have a slope, I'm sorry, y-intercept at 1, notice we want to plot 1 on the y-axis. So plot 1 on the y-axis. And from that point, we're going to use the slope to move. Notice 2 is 2 over 1 in fraction, right? That means they're telling you to move up 2 over 1 to the right. So let's do that. So using that slope of 2, 2 over 1, let me go from this point. We're going to go up 2 over 1 to the right. So we will have a new point right here. And you really only need two points to graph a straight line. So 
as soon as you plot your second point using slope, you're not plotting two. You're well slope. You have to look at it as how you know how you should move from a point that's already point uh, plotted. So um, I moved up two over one to the right from the y intercept. So that's how we can graph this by hand. Let's let me go ahead and uh, open up my Desmos, my graphing calculator app that I downloaded. Let's do y equals two x plus one. And if you take a look, it matches our graph. We have a y intercept at 0, 1. And they never ask in our problem, but if you can see, we also have a y x intercept at negative 0, 0.5, 0. But the second point that I plotted was right here. I don't know if I don't know if I can like have a point. You see, we have a second point at uh we went up to 1, 2 over 1. So we should have another point at uh, one, three. And that's the second point that we plotted. One, three. So that's what you can do to graph a straight line by hand. But we have, we get to use a graphing calculator just to check your answer. And the app that I just used is called Desmos. Um, you don't really need, um, a graphing calculator for Math 154. So if you don't have one, um, when you're doing your homework, if you want to use the Desmos app, to check your graph, that's gonna be all right, okay? All right, it's this very same thing for number three, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do uh, number four. Now this one, I like it because it's a little different. Look at the equation, y equals negative four x plus one. What they had in common, number two and number four, their y-intercept is both one. But look at the slope, slope is, well, I called it m, but you do know what I mean by m, but slope is negative 4, and the y-intercept is at 1. So if you graph this, let me go ahead and graph 1 on the y-axis, plot that on the y-axis. But when, when they say slope of negative 4, they're telling you to go down 4 over 1 to the right. So let me do that. Go 1, 2, 3, 4 down over one to the right. So I will have another point down at one, two, three. So I'm gonna have another point at negative three. I'm sorry, not negative three. Negative three is the y coordinate. Um, one, negative three. So um, use the slope. Um, the slope is telling you how many you're going up or down on the numerator. So this guy was telling us go down four and the one is always about uh, over one to the right. So after uh, plotting two points, you're just going to uh, graph a straight line. And notice this line that we just graphed is going down from left to right because it had a negative slope. Let's check this one on our graphing uh, calculator app. So I'm going to type in y equals negative 4x plus 1. And notice we have a y-intercept right at 0, 1. 0, 1. And to get to the next point, it went down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. So we do have another second point at 1, negative 3. 1, negative 3. Okay? All right. So that's how you can graph uh, an equation that's already in slope-intercept form. Um, the other ones are going to be very similar. Now, guys, I used the... Uh, uh, slope and the y-intercept, but what you can also do is you can just plug in random uh, x values, and as long as you have two points, uh, you can connect the dots. Maybe, you know what, let me go back and try different method on number three and five, okay? Number three and five. Um, determine the slope and the y-intercept. Use the slope and the y-intercept to graph the equation. Now, they they, they're telling us to do the same thing. Use the slope and the y-intercept, but... Um, I just want to do show you a different method if you don't really, um, I mean, you're okay with it. But when you are graphing a linear function, you already know that the graph of this function is going to be a straight line. And in order for you to draw a straight line, you only need two points. So what, I, what you can do is you can just plot any two points. And my table doesn't even have to be that, that long because all I really need is two points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a XY input table and just get two x values, random x values. What would happen if you plug in zero into your x value? And you know, that's, a, that's gonna be an important point. If you plug in zero into your x, 
what happened? You're left with negative 5. If you plot this, this will be the y-intercept. This is going to be the y-intercept down at negative 5. So remember, y-intercept is when x value is 0. Remember that. Um, now I can find another point. Um, and, you know, for the x value, you can really pick anything. What if I pick 1, just a random 1? Um, if I plug in 1 into my function, that will be 3 minus 5, which is negative 2, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot these two points. Um, the first point is at 0, negative 5. The second point is at neg 1, negative 2. And I know on 5.2 uh, homework, you guys already kind of practice plotting these points. So you know how to plot these points. 0, negative 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down on the y-axis. That's my first point. And my second point is at 1, negative 2. So I got my second point right here. And let me go ahead and connect these two dots. And I am done graphing. But if you take a look, let's talk about the slope. Let's try to connect this. If I go up 1, 2, 3 from that point, I went up 3, over 1 to the right, over 1. What I notice is that the slope of this line that I just graphed is 3 over 1. So the slope is 3. Isn't the slope 3? So they all connect, like however you want to graph, you can graph by slope and y-intercept. I think that's the way that you want to probably do on your My Math Lab homework. But um, sometimes it's hard to just go up and over on a computer screen. So if you want to plot points, that's another good method, I think, if you want to do that. All right, um, why not? Let's try number five too. I, I, I kind of like this plotting method because this plotting method is just very basic, but it works for what? Every other function, not only a linear function, but later when you do a quadratic function or any other function, you can plot enough points on the graph and connect the dots. And that's how you can graph a function, right? All right, let's try this one. I'm going to make a um, x, y table. And again, for quadratic or any other type of function, you will want... You, you're going to want definitely more than two points. But for a linear function, you just need two. So I'm, let me plug in the easiest point that I know. What if, what if we let x equal zero? What are we expecting to get for the y value? Remember, y-intercept is when x is zero. What's the y-intercept? Three, right? So y, because if you do five times zero plus three, you will get three. So your first point is going to be at zero, three. I just like to always make my y-intercept to be the first point. All right, next one, I'm just going to randomly plug in 1. And, you know, if I do that, I'll be able to see that the slope is 5. The rate of change is going to be 5. I'm supposed to go up by 5, so I'm expecting this to be what? 8. Let's see. What is 5 times 1 plus 3? That's going to be 5 plus 3, and that is really 8. Notice that the constant rate of change as I go up 1 in the x is going from 3 to 8 on the y value, so that's really 5. So I'm going to go ahead and plot. You know how it's beautiful? It all connects. Let me go ahead and plot these. 0, 3, 1, 2, 3. Here's my first point. And next point is 1 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's my second point, and I'm going to just connect these dots. Now, if you notice, let's try to read the slope from here. I'm going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up, up 5, over... 1. So the slope of this line is 5 over 1, or 5, as we can see over here. All right. So I kind of went over two different little methods, right? Uh, but either way, I think you should try to use the slope and the y-intercept method uh, because um, I'm thinking my math lab may not like uh, the second point that is not exactly from, I'm, I'm not sure, but you try this um, and you let me know if you're having trouble on your issue on your homework, okay? But now let, let us look at a couple more word problems, okay? Six, seven, eight, and the last one. All right, number six. Oh, we have a $990 washing machine in a laundromat. Oh, look at this word. Depreciated for tax purposes at a rate of $90 per year. So if you buy this washing machine brand new, it's $990, right? But every year it's going down in this value by, what, $90 per year. 
Uh, find the uh, function for the depreciated value of the, of the washing machine as it varies with time. When does the depreciated value reach zero? Oh. So let me go ahead and write the equation. Y equals mx plus b. Now, guys, if they ask you or if I ask you, um, what is that constant rate of change? How much, what is, what's that amount that we are, we have to subtract every year on this uh, washing machine's um, value? You see, it's $90 per year, right? But it's not, slope is not positive 90. It should be negative 90. Why? Because it's going down. It's, um, its value is getting lower every year. So the slope should be negative and B, the y-intercept. So the idea is um, the y-intercept is the initial value at time zero. Um, how much is this washing machine right now? It is $990, right? So why, um, if I call what I should, it's probably a nice thing to um, label my x and y value. Let x be the number of years. Let x be the number of years. And then let y be the value of this washing machine. In dollars. Um, so if you write the function that will be y equals negative 90 times the number of years, but we are subtracting that value from 990, right? So that's the equation that we got. What they asked us, the second part of the question, they're asking when does the depreciated value reach zero dollar? So you know we're, we're about to plug in zero into this equation, but zero dollars. That's what we're talking about the y value being zero. So plug in zero into y, and let's try to solve this for x, because x stands for the number of years. Subtract 990 from both sides. If you do that, you get negative 990 equals negative 90x. Divide both sides by negative 90. What do you get for the x value? x comes out to be 11. And if I put the unit for the x, x stands for the number of years. So the answer is in 11 years, this washing machine will worth $0. Okay? So that's how we can set up a linear function, linear equation, and solve a, solve a question that goes with it. All right. Um, these are all just great problems. I can't skip any. All right, the following situation can be modeled by a linear function. So that means it's going to be a straight line function, either going up or down, but we're going to have to know about the constant rate of change. All right, write an equation for the linear function and use it to answer the given question. Price of a particular model car is $13,000 today. And oh, look, it rises with the time, with time at a constant rate of $940 per year. Now, I would usually think that a car value goes down because, um, you know, used cars are getting cheaper and cheaper every year, right? But this must be a special one because it's going up. Uh, the constant rate is... It, it, it rises. So what's that constant rate of change? Um, 940. Now you see the beginning value or the, 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 the price of this car today is how much? 13,000. So we got what we need. Uh, we're ready to really write the equation. We're going to say y equals the car value um, is equal to 940 times x plus 13 thousand and they're asking how much will a new car cost in 3.6 years ah sorry I, I misunderstood this question at first i thought we're looking at a specific car a one car but no they're talking about a particular model car so if they come up with a new model um uh, like a new car of course, the new Honda Civic in 2020 is more expensive than um, Honda Civic back in what, you know, 19 something. So, of course, the car value is going up because the newer the car, not the newer, like the newer the model is, they always charge more. All right. But they said, how much will a new car cost in 3.6 years? Now, you have to think about this. Are they giving us the X value or the Y value? Um, They're giving us the x value, right? Um, so y equals, y is the value of the car, um, 940 times 3.6 and add 
thirteen thousand to that. Okay, that's going to give you approximately sixteen thousand three hundred and sixteen thousand three hundred and eighty four. So notice number six and seven are different because number six we had to solve it for x, while number seven we just plug that um value into x because i mean depending on what you are given so you have to just read it very carefully and sometimes your answer will not make sense if you plug it into the wrong place okay all right now i think i put something like this on your um work uh, finding x and y intercept now i really only talked about the uh, y intercept where y intercept is when x value is equal to what? When x equals 0, right? But listen, x intercept is really the same thing. x intercept happens when, what do you think? y value equals 0. Because to be on the x axis, you know, you better be, um, here's the x axis, right? x axis right here. Uh, to be a point on the x-axis, notice all these points are not going up at all. These values are all having these values. If I just make, make you know, write down these order pairs, um, what they have in common, all their y values are equal to zero. So um, if they ask you, hey, find these intercepts, then all you need to do is just plug in zero into the other letter, other variable, and then solve for the x or y. So let me do the, the y uh, the x-intercept first, the one on the left, okay? So if I want to find the x-intercept, I plug in, plug in y equals 0. So if I write down the equation, it says 15 equals 5x plus 3y. Let me plug in y equals 0 into this equation. 15 equals 5x plus 3 times 0, right? What happened? Uh, 15 equals 5x. And now 3 times 0 will just be 0. Now I can divide both sides by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. I have an x intercept at x equals 3. So I can graph that. But you know what? Let me find these intercepts first and then I'll graph it. Okay? Now uh, to find the y intercept, simply plug in x equals 0. The equation is 15 equals 5x plus 3y. So plug in x equals 0 in here. 15 equals 5 times 0 plus 3y, right? Then we get 15 equals 5 times 0 is just gone. Um, so you can bring down your 3y. If you divide both sides by 3, what is the y value that you get? y comes out to be 5. Now, we didn't involve any slope on, we don't know anything about the rate of change here. But what we got is we got two points that are on this graph. And like we said numerous times, um, as long as you have two points on a straight line, we got the linear function. So let's graph these. First plot x equals 3 on the x-axis. 1, 2, 3 to the right, plot the point. This is the x-intercept of 3. Um, let's plot the y-intercept of 5 on the y-axis. Go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and plot the point. This is the y-intercept of 5. And then after that, you just draw a straight line connecting these two. And that's how you can graph a function. And now this method is more like what I did uh, with, the, with, with the second method, really plotting two points. If you want to know the slope of this, we can read the slope. We're going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the slope, if I'm reading from this graph, will be down 5 over 1, 2, 3 to the right. So the slope will be negative 5 over 3, but I don't think anybody asked me that on number 8. So, but you know, they we can still get the slope. Uh, and if you want to write this in slope intercept form, now we got all the ingredients. You know what the slope is. Slope is negative 5 over 3. The y-intercept is 5. So if you want to write the equation in slope intercept form, that will turn into a y equals negative 5 over 3x plus 5. But this is just kind of doing a little more extra stuff. Um, but I hope you really have fun with this section because I know you've seen this in uh, in previous math classes before, but... I think it's I think it's always fun to think about um, talk about slope and y intercept and all these constant rate of change. All right, number nine. 
They want you to find an equation of the line that contains the points listed in the following table. Now, let's check this. They never said anything. Well, I thought they never said this is a linear function, but how do I know they gave us a linear function? Equation of the line. Now, from this part, I know this must be a linear function because it's a straight line function. Now, um, if, it's a cons uh, if it's a linear function, we know we're going to have that constant rate of change. So what I want you to try is try to see uh, if you can figure out that constant rate of change. Starting at 0, going up to 3. It looks like I added 3. From 3 to 6, again, I added what? 3. From 6 to 9, I added 3. Ah, guess what? The constant, the long name, right? The constant rate of change. In other words, what's that called? Um, the slope, our m value is equal to 3. We're adding 3 every time the x gets bigger by 1. So the constant rate of change is 3. Now, if I ask you, hey, what's the y-intercept? I mean, you can plot all these points, uh, but if you plot all these three, uh, four points, which one of these will be on the y-axis? Look, 0, 0. 0, 0 is not only the origin, but it is, well, it is on the y-axis, right? It's on the y-axis. So the y-intercept, b... I should call it y-intercept, is at 0. So let's write the equation of this line. We already know that the slope is 3 and the y-intercept is 0. So if you write the equation of the line in y equals mx plus b format, plug in 3 into m, and this will be 0. So here's my final answer. y equals 3x plus what number? 0. Now, do we really have to write plus 0? We really don't, right? So I can just erase that part and say this is the equation of the line. And look at that. That is absolutely true. Um, this equation is saying, hey, to get to the y value, just multiply your x by 3. Is that true? 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. And 0 times 3 is 0. So this rule really works, right? This rule really works. So that's how you can write an equation of a line looking at, you know, if we really just need two points, but they gave us four and one of them, we were lucky because that one they gave us was in y, was, was the y-intercept. Now, when you are doing your homework and when you get a table that doesn't give you a y value, that is the y-intercept, well, let me know and maybe we can look at that one together too. All righty. Now, time for our very last example. This is more like the type of uh, problem that you will see on your Excel homework. Um, and in fact, uh, I created this. Or did I create this or did I get it from Pearson? I can't remember. But this is really from an Excel. Uh, remember doing the trend line um, and the equation um, in one of the Excel homework? Um, they, we had a scatter plot and, uh, for men and women. They want you to interpret both slopes and y-intercept. Um, the blue one is for male. They included these legends. Blue is for male and uh, the orange is for female. And um, they said the trend line is both linear. They just um, found the trend line or the regression line for both of these. Um, for Oh, what are they about? No, oh, the median income. Hmm. Median income. Now, you see who's above the, the male median income is higher uh, than the female median income. But you know, hey, here's a good news, huh? Take a look at their slopes. Uh, the female slope is 264.1. So every year, uh, their income, median income is going up by 264.1 cents. And the male income, I mean, it's increasing, but it's increasing at a lower rate, 196.56. So, you know, we're looking at two lines, guys. Um, the blue one, male median income is higher. But notice how female median income, we're catching up. So what you're thinking, um, what I'm thinking is eventually, if you give enough time, they will have median, uh, equal median income someday, right? Now, they want you to interpret the slope and the y-intercept. So let me do that first, okay? Um, let's interpret the, the, the equation or the trend line for uh, male first. So say every year, say every year, um, we're talking about slope now, men's income... 
I should be a little more specific. Not income, men's income, but men's median income. Um, increased by, but it's all right. You see what I mean? Increased by how much? $196.56. Now, let's talk about the y-intercept. Y-intercept will be right there, but what in year what? Year zero? No. Um, though X values are going up by year since 1947. So what they mean by X value of zero? They're talking about year 1947. So zero years since uh, 1947. So what we're going to say, the Y-intercept, uh, in year 1947, men's median income was how much well i can't really read that point but notice that value twenty seven thousand ninety six dollar is the y intercept so uh, in 1947 men made that much okay all right let's do the similar thing for the female let me use this color every year Um, what females median income what increase by how much the slope of two hundred and sixty point four dollars and one cents and back in what year nineteen forty seven they made Oh my goodness, so low, $64,084.30. I mean, I said so low compared to what men made in 1947. But hey, here's the good news, guys. Look at the slope of female median income. Um, that's bigger, right? That's bigger. So what we know is that um, the, the woman's median, the female's median income will eventually catch up. So uh, the very last question is, is a very reasonable question. They said, use both equations to predict when men and women will have equal median income. And you know that's going to happen because the orange line is steeper with the bigger slope. So how do we do this? Really, just set men equal to women. Say men equal woman, and let's look for that unknown variable, that time. How long will it take for their income to be the same? So do uh, 196.56x plus 27,096 dollars equal. Now, what did I just do? I just set uh, the men's equation equal to the woman's equation, 264.01x plus 6484.3, right? Now, let's solve this. Let's solve this. Um, let me go ahead and subtract. Um, it's up to you. It's an equation with two variable, e variables on both sides. I usually like to move my uh, terms that has x's to the left. So I'll do those first. I'll do 196.56x minus 264.01x. And then on the right side, let me keep the very uh, the, the constants, the numbers that doesn't have uh, variables. I'll just move them to the right side. So 6484.3 stayed there, but I have to subtract 27,096. Um, let me get a calculator and subtract these. Uh, the left side, I will get negative 67.45x. The right side, if I subtract, I will get negative 2... 20,000, um, no, is it 611.7? So I got um, $20,611.07. Yeah. If I divide both sides by negative 67.45, negative 67.45, x comes out to be, oh my goodness, approximately 306 years. Oh, gosh, it's going to take females' median income um, to equal men's median income um, 360, I'm sorry, 306 years from, what was the base year that we were starting from? 1947. So let me figure out the, the, the actual year then. Do 306 plus 1947. What do you get? Oh, 2,000, uh, 200. 53. So in year 2020 53, 
we are projecting or predicting then female and male's median income to be the same okay so that's how we can use this trend line well assuming that um, these median incomes grow in linear pattern that's what you can do um but that's all i have prepared for 5.3 um please try your 5.3 problems on my math lab and uh, feel free to reach out. We're going to start chapter 6 next week, and we are almost done with Math 154. I'll also post this on Canvas for you, okay?